Hi, I'm Kamali and I'm at home. Here's a look at some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. A look at the US space plane and what it could mean for energy on Earth. We take you on a tour of a deserted Istanbul. We'll tell you who Hollywood's most potty mouthed actor is. And what is the most random place to film some penguins for social media? And top of our news feed, the X-37B. That's the name of the US space plane, which is on its way to outer space right now. Its mission, among other things, is to explore potential new technology that could help the energy crisis here on Earth. In liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket with USSF-7 for the United States Space Force on a mission dedicated to America Strong. to imagine what will be imagined, plan for what's possible while it's still impossible. So we've worked very hard on this, and it's so important from a defensive standpoint, from an offensive standpoint, from every standpoint there is. Uh, as you know, China, Russia, perhaps others, uh, started off a lot sooner than us. We should have started this a long time ago, but we've made up for it uh, in spades. We have uh, developed some of the most incredible weapons anyone's ever seen. I call it the Super Duper Missile. And I heard the other night 17 times faster than what they have right now. Okay, back here on Earth. Here's some other stories you need to know this Monday. This is the High Committee in Hong Kong, and those politicians are fighting over plans to make it illegal to insult the Chinese national anthem. The spat is the latest stage of what opponents see as growing control over Hong Kong by China. People against ties to China demonstrated for many months in 2019 over the issue. Hong Kong will officially become part of China in 2047. This is Rona Ambrose, and she was once the health minister for the government of Canada. At the time, she advocated against the use of e-cigarettes. She's now on the board of Juul, one of the world's biggest manufacturers of e-cigarettes. A criminal named Martin Schreckley has been denied permission to be released from prison because he says he wants to work on a COVID-19 treatment. The internet called Shrekley Pharma Bro as he once bought a patent for a life-saving HIV drug and then increased the price 500% from $13 a pill to $750 a pill. He was then jailed two years later for fraud. 
and at least one person is dead after a Canadian aerial display team jet crashed into a house in a city called Kamloops. The team, called the Snowbirds, have been flying around the country in support of healthcare workers. The jet crashed shortly after takeoff. Well, the banning of the full face veil in France and other European countries was always a thinly veiled form of Islamophobia. So now that those countries have brought in compulsory face mask bans, how's that law on banning the face veil going to hold up? Okay, now let's join Errol and Janan for a socially distanced tour of a very quiet Istanbul. Today we're going to show you the streets of a normally hustling and bustling Istanbul under lockdown and the effects it's had on the city. So now we're going to split up to show you the different sites in Istanbul during lockdown. Let's go. We are straight side in an empty ortico. Normally, this place would be filled with people buying trinkets, souvenirs, and street food. And now it's the most silent I've ever heard it. But you can really tell a difference in the air quality now, as Istanbul's air pollution has been down 30% since January. Istiklal Street, where I am right now, was a street that you could barely walk down without bumping into people, attracting almost three million people on the weekends alone. Now, I mean, it speaks for itself. Local residents and city councils are normally the ones responsible for feeding the hundreds and thousands of stray animals out on the streets of Istanbul. With people now encouraged to stay home, local councils and patrol staff have been assigned the role. And I've brought along some cat food just for in case. We are in Sultan Ahmed Square, which is the central touristic hub of Istanbul and the very center of the old city. This place is always teeming with people, with life, with dogs, with tourists, with locals, 24 seven. And this is the first time I've ever seen it this empty, it's wild. It is also the fasting month of Ramadan. This mosque right behind me would generally be packed with people as mosques are generally active during this month. Turkey's interior ministry also announced it will be taking extra measures during this month, saying that they will take every precaution necessary from when the fast begins in the morning until it ends in the evening to assure social distancing. Events as well as tents where people gather to break their fast will not be allowed. one of Istanbul's hotspots, a major tourist location, the Grand Bazaar. Normally, a place where you can find literally anything you need, COVID-19 has made all 4,000 stores and 61 streets within the bazaar closed down. 
The bazaar attracts up to 400,000 visitors daily and was one of the first places to close early on during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you, Errol and Jana. And let's take a look at some other COVID-19 related stories that caught our attention today. Well, the coal industry may never recover from the effects of the lockdown. That's according to the Global Carbon Project, a campaign that aims to reduce the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. Activists say the pandemic has led to a huge reduction in energy consumption and that many countries which are big users of coal may end up relying more on renewables in the future. The most famous mountain in Japan, Mount Fuji, is going to be closed this summer because of COVID-19. It's the first time the peak has been closed since it launched as a national park back in the 60s. More than 230,000 people climbed the mountain last year. As Italy begins reopening, St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican is preparing to hold mass. The entire site has been sprayed with disinfectant and priests will be required to wear gloves and masks when delivering communion. And the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, wasn't able to get a table at a cafe over the weekend as the business was at its COVID capacity. New Zealand has a population of 5 million people and 21 deaths caused by the disease. Well, now for the world record news that you have all been waiting for. The record for the most curse words in a movie goes to, drumroll please, Jonah Hill. Swearing. I assume you can't say nothing defamatory and you can't say f that, right? Academy Award winners do it. What the But it's gonna burn. What'd you just say? I said your baby's gonna burn. Oh, oh. nice old ladies do it. Who the hell you think you are? Annabelle, get the f out of here! Be my boys only, you little Even children do it. Swear words have featured in films since the advent of the talkies in the 1920s. But perhaps the most famous cuss word from those early days of cinema is in the 1939 epic Gone with the Wind, when Clark Gable utters these words. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a In 1970, the gold classic MASH was the first major studio release to allow the use of the F word and 2013's The Wolf of Wall Street hold the Guinness World Record for the most F-bombs in one film. It's used 506 times, or an average of 2.81 F-words a minute. So, you think the lead Leonardo DiCaprio would be Hollywood's most prolific potty mouth, right? Wrong. He's only number two. What about Samuel L. Jackson? He's infamous for one particular word. Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you. No, wrong again. Jackson's in third place. A study of more than 3,500 film scripts shows Jonah Hill swears more than any other actor. 376 times in total and 22.9 times per thousand words. It's okay. Rub my temple. You're all right. He's jokingly thanked director Martin Scorsese for pushing him over the edge and gave a shout out to Jackson. But Jonah Hill, be warned. No! What? No! The study also suggests the use of profanities has declined since its peak in the 1990s. Oh, okay. And last up, after cows on roofs and sheep in cities and goats, or goats just about everywhere, we bring you penguins at a museum. Yes, the Kansas City Zoo took three of its Humboldt penguins for a day trip to the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. As you can see, the animals look as bemused by all of this as I am. They were filmed wandering around the exhibits and paintings and not a fish or krill in sight. And that is all from the news feed team. Do reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. As always, I'm at Kamali Melbourne. You can find us 24 seven on YouTube. You can subscribe to that channel and follow me on Twitter. Follow, subscribe, and add. Stay at home, Evdecal, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon.